Okay, everybody, another 30 seconds and then we'll probably get going. Um, ask that everybody stays on mute and we will uh, hopefully start in a wait for a few more people just in case, unless anybody's in a rush. <laughs> All right, everyone, how are we? Um, welcome. November 18th, actually today would have been my parents' 40th wedding anniversary. Um, so it's a nice uh, occasion for me. Um, call shot lunch, we're here in November. COVID is still kicking everybody's behind. Uh, this is being recorded, so it will be on the Sabre page um, and YouTube eventually as well. Um, I'm home. Uh, in my upstairs office, technically it's my wife's office, but uh, it has a, uh, I have two monitors here, so I'll be able to do, hear some screens, and uh, hopefully um, everybody enjoys now. Um, this is not going to be something very academic. It's not going to wow you. I did not find a new statistic. Um, I didn't find any new research um, that will be of interest to everyone. This is kind of a, a personal story. Um, everybody has a, a different, I guess, tale how they became a baseball fan. And uh, today is going to be mine. Um, I will admit people as they keep coming in. So if I pause for various reasons, I have a lot of screens open here. Um, just bear with me. Um, most of you, I would assume, um, were introduced to, to baseball by your dad or parent or uncle or grandparent. Um, my dad tried, I wasn't interested as a kid. Um, but before I get into that and show you some photos and tell you my story, um, my unusual story compared to most, um, I'm gonna give you some statistics on myself. Let me share a screen here real quick. Hopefully you can see that. If you can't, just let me know in the chat. Okay, everybody see that? Okay, I'm gonna move Zoom over this way. All right. Do, 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 do. Doing my best here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. All right, this is the screen I'm sharing. Put together just a few slides that show my statistics, if you will. Um, of how I became uh, a fan. Um, so here we go, early life. I was born um, outside of Scranton, Pennsylvania, lived there for my first 18 years. Um, it was a Phillies fan region. So both my dad and my grandfather, my dad's father, were Phillies fans. Um, momentarily, you actually see me wearing Phillies gear for once of, probably one of the few times ever in my life. Um, and before I had a say. Um, didn't really follow baseball. Um, as a kid, I did play Little League because uh, I was kind of compelled to, I guess. It's uh, just what everybody did as a boy. Um, but I didn't really have a team until uh, my brother and I started following Oakland when they had um, a juggernaut there in the late 80s. Uh, my brother's four years younger than me. He was a big baseball fan, collected cards, that kind of stuff. Um, me, it was always a secondary or even a tertiary sport. Um, I followed pro basketball, pro football, college football, all that kind of stuff. We're always at the forefront of my uh, um, interest uh, back in those days. Um, I was definitely more academic than I was athletic. Um, and uh, share some stories about that momentarily as we head forward. So here's my personal stats, if you will. Uh, since I've become such a big fan, been to a lot of the current parks, been to a bunch that uh, are no longer among us. Some <laughs> are grateful that they're no longer here. Uh, been to a number of uh, minor league parks and independent league. Um, attended a ton of Major League Baseball games over the years. 
uh, primarily here at Oriole Park. Uh, it helps to live a mile away and to have a free pass. Um, and then I've been affiliated with a number of different organizations for a while, especially since I moved to Baltimore. Uh, Oriole season ticket plan for many years. Um, obviously, I've been involved with the birthplace, started as a volunteer all the way back in 2007, was in the Oriole Advocates for years, um, member of the DH program currently. Um, I've been in Sabre now for almost 13 years, so it took me a while to kind of really get some footing in it, and also involved with the uh, the Hall of Fame and um, Players, uh, Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association. Um, so obviously, that's a little bit in a nutshell. Um, you guys are all big baseball fans. You're all very similar um, in what you do. And, um, you know, that's kind of a, a brief introduction. Um, so how did it all start? Um, from a little kid from the Scranton area, who was actually fairly little as, as, a, as a baby, I am going to start with some photos momentarily and uh, kind of walk you through how I became, from what I can recollect, that I became um, a fan. So let me get this going. Da, 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 da. Uh, All righty. Um, if you can see that, that is me as a child. Um, I was actually the smallest. I was the first of my parents' three children, and I was actually the smallest um, in terms of both in size and weight. Um, like I mentioned, Grew up in a small town. Um, baseball was of uh, great interest to a lot of people. You played little league, started playing t-ball at what age five or six. Um, I played t-ball two years, a couple of years of minor league ball, official little league out of Williamsport, um, and then played regular little league. I think for three seasons. We moved from one town to another, so I switched little leagues. Um, I was terrible. I'll be the first to admit it. Um, but uh, just probably too big, too fast. And uh, didn't have a lot of interest in it. I just played because my dad wanted me to. And as soon as I was 12, 13, and couldn't play anymore, I was done. Um, here is a photo of me. I'm sure my dad did it to me, and I didn't realize it at the time. Billy's gear. Um, yeah, I don't know where I'm three or four there. It's hard to tell. I was bigger than most kids. Um, I think the number 32 was a Steve Carlton little jacket, I'm guessing. Um, this is in the backyard of our first home, in, uh, West Pittston, Pennsylvania. Um, it's probably the only time that I can recall wearing Phillies gear, or at least there's photographic evidence of it, because obviously I didn't know what I was doing back then. Um, so my dad had high hopes, son plays baseball, all that kind of stuff. Um, since I wasn't very good, and my brother was, um, he kind of took up the, the baseball mantle. My dad was, uh, he played baseball as a child. Um, he was a track star in high school, so he didn't play high school baseball. And then throughout our um, growing up, he got involved with Little League as a coach. And then eventually was the treasurer and the vice president and the presidents and all this kind of stuff and was involved with uh, district type stuff. Um, we were only an hour from Williamsport. So um, very involved with, with Little League baseball for at least probably about a quarter of a century. Um, I was not an athlete at that stage in my life. I uh, don't have any athletic pictures of me today to share with you. Um, because by the time I got into my teens and 20s, I could be pretty good at basketball, I could dunk, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and for several years, from ages about 11 to 14, I did martial arts. Um, now my black belt, first degree black belt, um, that was the sort of the um, culmination, a couple of years of training and uh, became uh, pretty good. Um, I was probably about six, two, six, three by the time I stopped uh, freshman year in high school. Um, but it helped me hone, I guess, uh, my athletic abilities and, and kind of my body was able to be controlled, I guess, by, by that age. I kind of grew into it over time. Um, so you're wondering what does this have to do with baseball? It doesn't. It's a little bit the background. 
Um, like I said earlier, I'm assuming most people um, joined baseball or got into baseball due to a relative, or parent, an uncle, grandparent, whatever, took you to your first game, uh, whether you went to one uh, minor league game or a late major league park or you listened to it on the radio. Um, I honestly don't remember my first game. Um, it, it didn't wow me. I probably am sure I was somewhere between seven or eight years old. Um, people always say, I remember my first game. I remember my dad taking me. I remember smelling the grass and seeing my favorite player. For me, uh, didn't happen. Um, obviously I was taken. This was the place I was taken. And anybody who's ever been there knows it was one of the worst baseball places ever created. Veteran Stadium, Philadelphia. Not memorable, um, barely a baseball park, um, unless you like to run on carpet, I guess. Um, so sometime around the ages of, of seven, eight, I went. And I went many times uh, over the years, probably you know, somewhere around eight or 10 times to the vet um, with my dad, my grandfather, my brother, whomever. It wasn't baseball to me, uh, it's the way we think about it today. It was plastic, it was kind of, dull um and i purposely didn't root for the phillies i'd wear a mets hat or a dodgers hat or whatever was the opponent that day um so uh it just it, it wasn't for me and plus the phillies used to wear those awful pinstripe home maroon pajama looking uniforms just, ugh, just yuck um that bad 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 from above bad oh so, um when I was in high school, I think it was my sophomore year of high school, um, Triple A baseball came to Scranton for the first time. Um, professional baseball came back to Scranton, actually. I think it had been there in the, in the 50s, uh, 60s, maybe. Um, the Triple A came, came to Scranton. People were interested. Oh, baseball be in our backyard. It'll be a Phillies Triple A team. Um, should be interesting. So in 1989, the Lackawanna County Multi Purpose Stadium opened. And instead of getting a nice, Wonderful baseball park in your backyard. You got this. It was basically Veteran Stadium Junior. Exact same AstroTurf, exact same dimensions. Built at the base of a, a, of a mountain and ski resort, um, but with the tri AAA version of the vet. And it was ugly. And uh, it was there for a long time. Um, and it was great to see teams coming in and out of the, the Scranton area, AAA, Future Stars. Um, stars from the Phillies or players coming down when they're doing rehab assignments. Um, but uh, from a baseball park standpoint, uh, as we would learn come in the 90s, this was a, an outdated uh, style. Um, and while Scranton still does have a team today, it's been very, uh, very much demolished and remodeled into a, a very nice classic uh, park these days. So um, throughout my teens and 20s, I didn't really follow baseball. I, I, I mean, I'd watch the World Series with my dad and my brother. We went to the Little League World Series a couple of times, uh, to Williamsport to the championship games. It was there, but not really there. I wore Oakland athletic shirts here and there. Um, I did some athletic things. In, you know, I played uh, basketball in high school. Um, <clears throat> played some intramural sports in college. Um, do some adventurous things uh, over the years. There's actually a photo of my sister and I before we went skydiving about 15 years ago. So I like to try new things. You wonder, how did you become such a big baseball fan? Well, it started when I was 18. Um, I went to college in Washington, D.C. Uh, wasn't the smartest thing, but that's where I went. And I um, had never been to any baseball facilities on the professional level aside from Veterans Stadium. A bus trip came up in uh, early 1993. A school trip came up in spring, whatever they call it, spring uh, fling or something kind of uh, week. Uh, tickets to Camden Yards. So this was early 93. So it's Camden Yards' second season. I'd never been there. I didn't know what to expect. And of course, you're wild. Um, I was there, I guess it was an April night. It was kind of rainy. It was a game once the White Sox, um, you know. Look at that, a beautiful city, a throwback ballpark, um, fresh grass, um, a big crowd. Um, I think the White Sox actually won, 
but it kind of planted the seed, I think, in me of, uh, well, if this is what baseball is supposed to be like, yeah, I can, I, I can get along with this. I can enjoy this. Um, but still the same things sort of happened. I, you know, I was wrapped up in my life. I didn't really follow baseball. I only came up to Camden Yards maybe once every other year. Uh, if somebody was interested, you know, would drive up or, or take the Mark train up or whatever it might be. Um, and, uh, but it was, it, it was always fun. Um, and it was always, you know, in, enjoyable. Um, but it took me a long time to kind of get my acting gear in terms of being, being a baseball fan. Um, same sort of thing, watch the World Series, kind of follow players who were interested. Personally, my brother and I were big Mark McGuire fans uh, from his Oakland days through St. Louis. Um, and uh, actually, one of the times I came off the Camden Yards, because Oakland was still in town, and I wanted to see McGuire uh, play. I'm talking around 96. Um, so how did I become some such a mega, mega, mega fan? Well, I had some not so great years uh, after I graduated college. It's hard to start a career, hard to get by, kind of really um, going against the grain to try to make something happen. Um, a lot of things didn't work, didn't work out for me. I just kind of had some bad luck. Um, in the year I, uh, I went through a bad breakup one summer in 2004. And um, I'd say, well, that's odd. Um, but how did that lead you to baseball? And I said, it's kind of hard to explain, but when I had a lot more free time, I started watching more baseball on television. Uh, Orioles, this is before the Nationals existed. And I started coming up to more games. Um, by myself or with friends. Um, I probably did five or six games at Camden Yards uh, in 2004. And as I had more free time, um, and I went through a trifecta that summer, turned 30, um, relationship ended, and I got a new job. Um, as the job, um, it's a new position, I'm making a lot more money, and I had a little bit more at my disposal. So I started traveling and going to ballparks. I was like, I like this baseball thing, all those Camden Yards thing. I want, I want to see places. I went to Philadelphia's new park that year, uh, Citizens Bank. Um, I went out to Pittsburgh. I kind of definitely was like, I like this. this. This is me. I like to get on the road and see stuff and see the games and, and, and whatnot. Um, so the next year, early 2005, I was working a lot of hours, a lot of overtime. And uh, I went on my first vacation by myself in, in many, many years. And uh, what was I going to do? Should I go to the beach? Should I go to some exotic country or something? That's not my style. I did six parks in seven days. Um, I'd never been Midwest. I'd never actually been outside the Eastern time zone up to that point, I, I believe. So um, what does an adventurous, fairly young guy who's single uh, do? He schedules a bunch of hotels, he shows up at games, and he goes around, and uh, I started in uh, Chicago, and um, did six or seven, six parks, I think, in seven days was, was that year. And this is me um, at Wrigley. Um, first time I'd ever been to Wrigley, first time I've ever been to Chicago. Um, it was, I think, Mark Pryor pitched that night, if I remember right. Um, I had a blast. People were like, well, isn't that boring? You just went to ballparks and drove from city to city? Yes, but it was sort of an awakening. Um, it wasn't boring at all. It was enjoyable. I got to see cities. Um, I got to, um, you know, um, experience things I'd never experienced. And I uh, sort of felt for the first time in a long time fulfilled. Um, so I kept it going. Um, you know, I'd go to different places. This was 2005. I think I went to maybe 10 or 15 different ballparks that summer alone. Um, that here's obviously me at Camden Yards, summer of 2005. The next year in 06, um, I, uh, did it again. I went to Denver. I went to, um, Um, are you guys not seeing the photos? Uh, 
What? Share screen. Hang on. I'm on share screen. Where are you? All right, hopefully, uh, hopefully you're seeing it now. Um, I'm glad I saw the chats. Sorry about that. All right, me at Camden Yards now. Okay, um, hopefully from here on we'll go forward. So like I was saying, um, 06, I did the same thing. I uh, wanted to see more of the country. I wanted to see ballparks. I went to Denver and I did all five parks in California in one week. Um, also went to the Reagan Library and, and, and uh, stopped in Carmel, but my primarily goal was ballparks. Um, so, you know, in, in a two year span, I think I saw what, 15, 20 different uh, venues, including some that obviously no longer uh, exist. Um, so, um, part of the story is also something that is, is good that came out of a, an almost bad. Um, at one point, my father was diagnosed, or they thought he might have cancer. Um, this is 2006. And quite honestly, I'd, I'd had enough of Washington, DC and, and, and the, um, the Northern Virginia region. Um, and even though I had a great job, I wanted to get out. Um, I was about to ready to move back home to the Scranton area if my father was sick and help whatever I needed to. Uh, I found out he was he was sort of misdiagnosed um and it wasn't what we thought it was early on so that was a good thing but i had gotten myself so excited about getting out of washington i decided i was still going to do it where do i go i mean work in the legal world or some places like yeah you know i want to i want to stay in it make this kind of money so i actually thought you know maybe i should move to philadelphia i'd be close to my parents um and also um, still be in a major metro area um, and could do the same kind of work and all that kind of stuff. And it was actually my dad when I told him my plan. I thought, I think I'm going to move to Philly. He's like, don't go there. And he's like, why don't you go to Baltimore? He said, you're always going up there for games, baseball, football, whatever. Um, that uh, should be your thing. You should move up there. He's like, then I can come visit more often, stay with you. We can go to games. That kind of that plant that said, well, I could do that. Um, so I ended up, that's how I ended up moving to Baltimore on, on my father's suggestion. Um, I could stay in the legal field because this is a major city. And actually, I could, I, when I first moved here, I still commuted to DC for a while on, on the train. And um, it was uh, it was a good switch for me. It was a totally different environment. Bought my first house, where I still am. Um, and uh, Camden Yards is pretty much my backyard. So that was a great motivator. And that's how I ended up here. First year in Baltimore, didn't know anybody when I moved here. You know, got involved with the church. I ended up getting involved with the uh, Babe Ruth Museum um, just by joining as a member. And then they recruited me as a volunteer and <laughs> snowballed from there over the years. Um, so by early 08, um, I hadn't been on a, any major trips uh, in a while. Early 08, I met a young lady um, who I'm now married to. Um, she lived in Massachusetts. So I went up to visit her a couple of times. Um, she's a Philadelphia girl, but she lived in Massachusetts when we first met. So I'd go up to see her. I minor league parks with her, that kind of stuff. Here's actually a picture of me. You can see it. Um, at Fenway, one of my least favorite places. I've been to a game there and this is with this taking the tour. And I'm wearing a Phillies hat, so don't ask about that today. Um, but, uh, you know, I was open to, to new things. And uh, Renee and I went here, obviously, on this day. Our first photo of us together is actually inside Fenway. It's kind of ironic. Um, but, uh, and she lived in Lowell, so we went to minor league games in Lowell, and that sort of thing. Um, as time, uh, Renee actually moved later that year um, back to Philadelphia. Um, to her home area, but she actually moved into the city. But if anybody remembers, 2008 was um, the Phillies made the World Series. 
Renee actually uh, got tickets um, or was selected to be able to purchase tickets through one of those lotteries. Wanted, she couldn't go because she was moving soon. Uh, I ended up buying them. And originally I was gonna take my brother who's pictured with me here and go to a World Series game. But he ended up being sick and, and, and whatnot. Um, so I was gonna go with my brother and my dad, ended up being my dad and my uncle and I. And this is my dad. Ultimate baseball fan seeing his favorite team um, inside Citizens Bank Park prior to game three of the 2008 World Series. It was a long rain delay um, before Jamie Moyer threw the first pitch. But um, he got to achieve a, a childhood a dream and, and see his Phillies in the World Series, which they eventually won. Um, and uh, he uh, it was one of the best nights of, of, of my life, definitely up to that point. So, a uh, new girlfriend, took my dad to the World Series, pretty good year. Um, Renee and I would do opening days in Baltimore, you know, as it started to build. Um, around this time, also, I joined Saber for initially, um, based on the advice of a, a gentleman who I worked with at the museum, who was a Saber member, he told me about it. Obviously, I'd heard about Saber. Well, there's no Baltimore chapter. He's like, you'd have to join the, the Washington one, uh, it's the closest. Um, but they do do some things up here in Maryland. So I did. And the first year or so, I wasn't really very involved. A lot of the things were in DC, Northern Virginia. I didn't go down for them. Um, with those uh, talking baseball things that happened in Columbia, I started attending those. And I met Dave Raglan and I met Bruce Brown and, and guys like that. And that's how, same sort of thing. It started gaining traction um, with time, you know. And in, uh, in between all of that, um, my involvement with the oral advocates and stuff like that, going to games here. I spent a lot of time with my dad and my brother trying to go to games. So a couple other photos uh, over the years. Um, Nationals game in 2010, my brother was a big Cubs fan. I think that was the first time he ever saw the Cubs win. Um, I believe Lou Pinello was still the manager then, but i not precise on that. Um, going to games when we could. Um, Renee and I go in a game against the Orioles at Nationals Park uh, the year we were gonna get married. Um, if I ever went to a Sabre convention, we went out to the Midwest. That's my friend Brian and I at Target Field. Uh, me at the Field of Dreams, corn is very low because it's only June, I believe. Um, me at Wrigley for the Sabre game that day. Um, me on Wrigley Field, taking the tour. Yankee Stadium tour. Um, Renee and I had spring training in 2018. Um, went to Sarasota and to the uh, Phillies Spectrum Theater Field, I think it was called. Um, and then me holding a Stan Musial bat, me and my buddy Brian see the Cardinals. Um, Cubs at Cardinals, the final uh, series of the regular season in 2019. Actually, I saw Joe Madden's last win as Cubs manager. Um, I like a lot of you, big baseball fan, go to a lot of games, love to see ballparks, love to learn new things. Um, one of the additional benefits of being involved with like the Babe Ruth Museum and, and, and some of the Oriole groups and Sabre, you get to meet people over time, uh, if that's your thing. I'm not a collector, I don't really need autographed items, but I do enjoy meeting people who are, who are my heroes or my dad's heroes. Um, so, Yogi. Um, Tim Kirchin, I think that was at a, a Sabre book talk. Um, Cal and Eddie, that was at a, a Babe Ruth Museum fundraiser years ago. Um, me with the 1970 World Series team. Um, obviously, several of those gentlemen are now passed on, like Frank and Earl, um, probably a few others. Um, that was a, a wonderful event. Uh, there's me with Eddie Murray at a Babe Ruth Museum event. Dempsey. Um, and then earlier this year with uh, Billy at a book signing. Um, and then our illustrious president and I, Bruce Brown, with uh, Orioles GM, Michael Elias, back in January before COVID. So um, there's benefits, uh, obviously, to being a, a, a little bit of an inner circle with Sabre and, and the museum and that kind of stuff. Um, I enjoy meeting my heroes. Um, obviously, my primary thing is, is going to games, um, learning. Um, I've, I've learned a lot about the Negro Leagues in, in the past. 
Uh, unlike a lot of you guys out there, I haven't done any research. I haven't written any books, articles, any kind of groundbreaking stuff as of this point in my life. Um, and I'm kind of dwarfed by some of my colleagues, especially in the Baltimore chapter, written books or Negro League experts or Baltimore baseball experts or roots with his trivia, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I think one of the reasons why um, I was made uh, an officer when we started the Baltimore chapter is because I had some of these connections with the Orioles in the museum. Um, and, uh, you know, it's worked out well for us. You know, Baltimore has, because our chapter is relatively successful, but knew that we landed Sabre 50, if and when it ever happens. Um, and hopefully we're gonna make it extremely memorable when it uh, does come to fruition. But, you know, baseball is not only passion and a hobby and however things you wanna look at it, it's also bled into, into my personal life. You know, like I said, Renee and I have been to tons of games, I've taken her to you know, minor league games, major league games. Um, she's been to the Sabre conventions with me. She goes shopping where I, I go to the conference. Um, and then of course, why not? I proposed at the Hall of Fame um, over eight years ago. That's me proposing in front of the World Series rings display. The Hall of Fame was in on it. They took some photos. This is one of them. Um, uh, we had the baseball sort of bled into, into our personal lives. Uh, this is a story in and of itself um, and how I planned it. And then we did some of our engagement shoot, Camden Yards. Here's a picture or two. Um, Actually, our uh, save the date was uh, shaped like a ticket and this photo was used. Um, one thing I love about this photo, aside from the weather being great in March of that year, um, the jersey Renee is wearing was, was my dad's Mike Schmidt jersey. Um, so I had a sentimental value um, as well. So obviously the future wife is uh, cool with the baseball stuff. So we brought it into our, uh, our day of our union as well. I got a wore a baseball ring, still on my finger. Um, we had our tables were named after teams and there were eight different tables depending on where you sat at our reception. And there was a giant bat as our guest book, it had signed. Um, and we had a cake that had baseball toppers. And of course the bride and groom that day were at the hall of fame table. Um, so my journey, as I kind of let you know, is, is much different than, than most. I'm, I'm definitely a late bloomer. Um, I can go into a lot more depth than this. Probably teach a college course on it if I wanted to talk about my entire existence. But, um, uh, you know, this was the first try to try, kind of explain how I came into it and, and how uh, baseball, even though it's a primary importance to my life now. There was a time when I got a kid. Um, and unlike the way a lot of you were probably introduced to the game, my path um, to my uh, fandom is a little more uh, unusual, to say the least. Um, but it is pretty much because of this guy. Um, that's my dad. That's the first uh, time um, I was at Yankee's old original Yankee Stadium. It was 2008, it's last season. We we're on a bus trip. Uh, my dad came down from Pennsylvania. We went out on a bus trip with the museum. You can see the new, soon to be brand new Yankee Stadium in the background. Um, my dad did like the Orioles, but the Phillies were his number one um, team. Um, and I think it was his passion over the years that uh, really, uh, really inspired me to, to stick with it. And I can tell you my first when I went to the Midwest and I went to all those ballparks um, in April of 2005, um, every time I'd stop at a park and I was about to go in and go buy a ticket, I'd sit in the parking lot and I'd call my dad and be like, I'm at Kaufman Stadium today. I'm here. Uh, I remember calling him from outside Wrigley Field. He was like, man, I've never made it there. He never did before he passed. He was, he was excited that I was living what was now my passion. And I think that uh, enhanced um, his enthusiasm and stuff. And I was grateful over the last couple of years before he passed away in 2012 to be able to share a lot of those things like taking him to the World Series and, and like that and meet Al Ripken and, and, and whatever um, as, as a way of thanking him. Um, he passed um, six months after Renee and I got engaged, so he didn't make it to our wedding. Um, 
but I always think about them, obviously. And with today being my, would have been my parents' 40th wedding anniversary. It's uh, kind of ironic that I'm talking about baseball, but um, uh, hopefully it's, uh, hopefully I make them proud. And uh, I think one of the, uh, he would have totally been in Baltimore uh, for Sabre 50 if he was alive. Um, and make sure he has a VIP seat. Um, um, I am who I am primarily because of, of, of him. Um, sorry, I bloomed so late, Dad, but uh, I got there eventually. Um, so I'm going to stop the share right now. Um, you guys have questions, comments? You can type them in. You can... Um, Vocalize them. Um, I'll do what I can. I don't know if that was interesting or not. Uh, it's just my own personal tale, um, sort of a condensed version. And uh, only 12:40, so we've got time. Um, if anyone wants to share, ask, whatever. I'm at home, so I'm in no rush to go anywhere. Peter, I enjoyed your talk because while you're talking, it's bringing back memories of my growing up and when I first got introduced to baseball. And again, the first game I went to was with my mom and dad. Uh, I can't even remember it back in 1949. Unlike you, though, I never made my little league team. I got cut when I was 10 years old because I was a little short kid and uh, I was a big star in our local neighborhood with the wiffle balls but when we had a little league practice tryout i couldn't believe how fast the bigger kids threw and as my brother uh, said to me he was two years younger you were outclassed by the pitchers <laughs> so maybe that and i can't remember if the team i was trying out for was the indians if it was then that started my lifelong uh, bitter love affair with the Indians and all the disappointments that have ensued over these years. Okay. Well, we still have hope that eventually they will win a World Series. And I hope to be alive when that happens. I'd like to see that too. I would have pulled for them in 16, but I had to go with the Cubs that year. Um, well, I'm thinking um, the Indian, I mean, uh, Chris Antonetti, the president of baseball operations, and Mike Chernoff, the general manager, have done a great job with limited budgets, making all these great trades to infuse the Indians with more talent. And I was thinking yesterday when uh, uh, you know, the Cubs' uh, deal announced that he was leaving, what could be better than uh, if the Indians, uh, if uh, Ep Antonetti and Chernoff leave would be a feather in a cap for Epstein coming to the Indians and uh, now that the Indians have gone the longest with, of any team without winning a World Series he could have a hat trick by taking, having the Indians win a World Series. Well, well you know the Indians won the World Series this year. Baseball <laughs> reference had a simulation of the whole season yeah. and the Indians beat the Cardinals in the World Series. I didn't know that, but the, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, in reality, Brad Hand couldn't hold the not, shades of Jose Mesa in the seventh game of the uh, 97 World Series. Couldn't hold a one-run lead in the ninth inning of uh, game two of the Yankee playoffs, and, and they lost. That's, that's Cleveland. Got a couple of questions here in the chat. Um, Stuart asked connection if I have a connection to the MLB Hall of Fame. I'm actually wearing an MLB Hall of Fame sweater here today because it was the gift for um, members this year if you're at a certain level. I don't really have a, a, a connection in terms of, uh, aside from having visited and being a big fan, I joined, must've been 2007, it was your cow went into, into Cooperstown and I didn't go to the actual induction but I wanted to support all that Cooperstown does. So I've, I've been a member over the years. I actually have a nice Cooperstown hat because I've signed up some relatives and stuff over the years. Um, 
and the reason I proposed there was I was basically the last guy to, <laughs> to settle down of uh, a lot of my friends. Um, and I wanted something different and I knew my bride to be. So proposing on the Jumbotron or those kind of things weren't uh, kind of out of the question. Probably would have been smack. Um, but uh, doing it and catching her off guard at the Hall of Fame and having them take pictures of it and was on their website that night and, and whatnot. Um, and even though it made a, an impact and a lot of people saw it, it was still very personal because nobody was there when we when it happened. Um, I haven't been to the hall. I think I've been there four or five times. First time with my father. Um, I haven't been since 2016 for my, uh, my cancer diagnosis. So I'm, I'm due for a visit, hopefully once uh, COVID is, uh, dissipates. Um, I like to go with my brother and, and his children, maybe next spring. Um, Meg asked, who was my, what was my favorite park? Well, Oriole Park obviously made the biggest impact. It's still probably my actual sentimental favorite. Um, of other ones that I've seen, um, I think aesthetically, Pittsburgh's probably the best. Um, I've been there four or five times. The Sabre Convention was there in 2018. Um, I've been to San Francisco, I've been to Denver, I've been to Wrigley, I love Wrigley. Um, I haven't seen some of the really new ones and in the last uh, 10 or so years. I did not get to Miami's, which I heard is either pick one extreme or the other on that one. Um, but I'd say uh, outside of Baltimore, I'd say Pittsburgh and then Wrigley. Um, then you can kind of hear down. I had not been to St. Louis until last year. 2019, and uh, I was really impressed by that one uh, as well. Um, uh, how did I get my baseball ring made? Renee found it. Um, it's um, titanium, so it can't be resized. It is uh, um, obviously inscribed on the inside, uh, blessed at our, you know, our ceremony. Uh, Renee found it, and I'm trying to remember the name of the company that found it. It was an online thing. We ordered. They had a couple different versions. They had a black one with uh, with the stitches, maybe one or two other kind of colors. I just like the regular. Uh, and you ordered it, and got a couple of different sizes, and tried them on, um, and see which one fit back. And then mailed them back, and then you ordered which one fit. fit back. I've had this, you know, for almost seven years now. Um, so she's the one who found it and suggested it and I was I was all up in that. Titanium Buzz is the company, uh, if you all read the chat. Um, not Biz, Buzz, right? Um, but it, uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, with Cheaters, Parcels, and Marlins, and Kim, Jim, what will the future bring? Thomas is asking that for anyone. Um, I hope a little bit more diversity, me personally. I hope expansion. Um, uh, I, for the most part, and a purist, um, yes, I do like the DDH because it's existed since I've been born. Um, I'm an AL guy. Um, if the if the National League goes with the DH, so be it. Uh, that's their call. Um, I did not like a lot of the, the rules this year. I still don't like instant replay, which they never had it, um, or had it on a much more limited scope. Um, but uh, the, the runner on second thing and, and some of these other things they tried this year, I, I'm not a big fan of. Um, I, uh, but I would like to see expansion. I'd like, to see, I'd like to see Tampa get a new ballpark. I haven't been there. I've seen it from the outside. I've not been inside. Um, I'd like to see Tampa get a new field, especially since they're so good. Uh, I'd like to see Oakland get a new field. And I'd like to see expansion by two teams, one in each league, maybe Nashville and Portland or Vegas or something. Um, that way we could have 16 and 16 and start to stop this early play BS every day of the season. Um, interleague's fine. Do it like what it used to be the three weeks. You got your six Yankees Mets games, you got your six Washington Baltimore games, whatever. But you know, when, when Baltimore, the last year we made the playoffs, Jeff, I think it was 2016. Um, we were going for a wild card. The Orioles end of the season should have been blue days, Boston, Tampa, your divisional rivals. Orioles closed out their home season playing Arizona. Um, they ended up obviously in the wild card and losing in the one round thing uh, to Toronto, but it just didn't have the same passion. And uh, for me, 
seeing interleague games in April and September and stuff, just, it just doesn't do it. Go to the game, um, but at the same time, um, I'd rather see the teams I dislike the most come to town and, 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 and whatnot. And I'm sure a lot of you guys, uh, you know, if you're uh, an Indians fan, you'd rather see the Tigers uh, or, or uh, the White Sox something come to town versus, um, you know, uh, the Dodgers. Um, no. Uh, anybody else have any comments on uh, Thomas's resources and how the question? Um, when it's across the country or even most of the country, we don't have that stuff to pull from. And hospitals across the United States are facing, are facing and even before COVID, we're facing major staff and shortages. Any, anybody else have questions or comments? Or? I don't want to put up a map. If you get a map of projections from the IHF, we have the University of Washington. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, you mentioned you. I saw some pictures you had from the ball games you went to. Have you have you kept anything from any of the ball games that you have attended over the years, such as maybe programs or tickets? Tickets. I have a lot of tickets, um, especially from places I went for my first time. Um, when I started going to different parks uh, after Camden Yards, I guess I went to okay, so the Citizens Bank in Pittsburgh first. Um, I always wanted to acquire a uh, something that I had been there. So I started collecting those um, kind of like the photo balls. I would say PNC Park on it or Citizens Bank Park. It would have a, a panoramic view of, of the ballpark. And not every uh, place had them, especially the old places that uh, um, were around for years and years and years and weren't really selling merchandise well, so um, like that. So I, I discontinued getting the balls, but I have a pin for every, every place I've been to, including the Field of Dreams. Um, actually, every ballpark I've been to, I have one, and I try to get one that has the stadium name on it, Oakland Coliseum, AT&T Park, whatever. Um, sometimes they didn't, so I have one that just has the Mets logo, but I know that one's from Shea Stadium. Um, the only place I, I don't have a pin from, and I'm sure I could find one on eBay if I really wanted to get it, um, maybe I don't want to admit I was there, is Veterans Stadium. <laughs> Well, up here, I grew up, I grew up going to Veterans Save, so I share your point of view about the place. But uh, on the follow up to that, what, does the same apply to when you visited minor league games? Have you kept anything from entertaining the minor league games you've been to over the years? Um, I usually have the tickets, but I have the, those passports. Um, for you guys, that have probably seen them. Um, I don't know when they started. Around 2012 or 13. There's a minor league baseball passport. There's an MLB one. Um, there's a spring training one. I think there's an independent park one. Um, I got the minor, I got the minor league one first. I actually bought it in, in at uh, Frederick Keys. I didn't know they existed. And I was like, that's an interesting. So I've done those stamps now of uh, places I've been since 2014. Um, and the major league one, obviously I've been to a crap load of ballparks, but I think I only have nine, maybe eight or nine stamps um, of the major league one. Um, one place I went to get it uh, because I knew it was closing. I think I started my major league passport in 2015. And ironically, I got uh, a Camden Yard stamp the weekend the Freddie Ray Wright uh, riot started. Um, I think they played Boston um, that weekend. Um, 2016, when I bought mine, obviously it had all parks that no longer exist in there now, like uh, Texas and, and uh, Turner Field and that kind of stuff. Ray and I, um, even though I was going through cancer dialysis uh, and chemo treatments, we went down to see Turner Field about a month before it closed. So I made sure I got that there. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, uh, it, that's an enjoyable thing. Um, you know, I'm in California with all five of those parks, but I only have one stamp. Um, that's from San Diego because we had Saber 49 there last year. Uh, so that's uh, you know that's sort of on the, the bucket list to go around and, and get all those. And um, if you guys haven't seen those MLB passports, there's a website and everything. They now have um, there's one for Cooper Center for the Hall of Fame. But they now have inserts you can get for the Negro League Museum. Um, the uh, Louisville uh, Slugger Museum. Um, feel the dreams. There may be something else, and we may try down the line to have the Babe Ruth Museum as a uh, as a stopping point. 
um, and, and an intern and stuff like that. So um, that's one of my uh, my things now is to go and get that you know stamped. It was easy to get Baltimore, easy to get Washington, but after that, you gotta you gotta make a little bit more of an effort. Um, and with minor league baseball, as you know, Saber, we always try to go to a game every year, every chapter. We combine with the the Bob Davids chapter, um, and this year was supposed to be. Uh, the Fredericksburg Nationals, or the, the Fred Net, I think that's what they're called. Um, the team that used to be in uh, Potomac. Um, so that would have been cool, but 2020 never happened on any level. And now with the, uh, the cutback of, of minor league teams, who knows uh, the teams might no longer exist come, uh, come next summer. Um, Peter, uh, could you, uh, I, I'm afraid, I, I'm Francis Kinlaw, and I, uh, I've had to step away for a couple of minutes. If you haven't already said this, uh, I was wondering how many hours, say, per week you work uh, on behalf of the Babe Ruth Museum, and uh, what some of your duties there are. Well, my official title these days is um, is volunteer coordinator. Um, I usually... My rise in the museum started out as a volunteer. I uh, did that for a year. And then I was approached uh, in early 08 to help out on the weekends. And you guys got to remember before the recession, um, everything was pretty good around the United States. Um, and the Babe Ruth Museum had the original Babe House and then had Sports Legends there right next to uh, Kim Yards, Oriel Park. Um, so I used to work at the birthplace all the time on, on weekends, especially Orioles home weekends when you get clobbered. Uh, and then once the recession hit, uh, 08, 09, numbers dropped off. Um, so I'd work weekends basically as a tour guide, work the cash register, that kind of stuff. Um, I, at either location. Um, as time went on, sometimes I'd only do sports legend, whatever. Um, then uh, after I got sick, time off obviously um and then there was the change in power uh at the museum one director stepped down retired got a new guy sports legends closed so the dynamics changed um and i had been involved for so long one of the few people who had a key um that uh once i came back um started re retooling the programs um and how we do things we're gonna do a lot more virtual things now Everything that you know in the nonprofit world or any world, it's money. I mean, you can only do what you have the funding for. COVID has not helped <laughs> um, anything that relies on, on tourism uh, and admissions and, and sales and stuff like that. Um, luckily, the museum has friends with deep pockets and also is very good at getting grants. Um, so these days, uh, once COVID hit, um, no need for volunteers. <laughs> We're closed for along um, and open just on a couple days a week. Now what I'm doing is um, doing a lot of archival uh, version from, uh, we have hundreds and hundreds of audio tapes of all sports, not just baseball, uh, Maryland related, of interviews. Some might be with Babe Ruth's daughter, some might be with Johnny Unitas, um, could be on radio programs, could be uh, stuff Archival stuff from back to the 50s, Point Wilhelm's no hitter, you know, from the Oriole days, stuff like that, burning them from the cassette tapes to um, digital. They, they can be used uh, down the line, um, be on websites, be available for, for classroom use, be available for digital research. Um, so that's what I've been doing a lot during the, uh, the pandemic. I have my own um, email address and stuff now, and an extension little office up there. So I go in a couple of days a week when I can and do some of this conversion. Um, the, the museum is, uh, you know, going to go more virtual because obviously tourists and school groups and, and that kind of out of town visitors aren't going to come back immediately. Um, and uh, so we've got to rely on different avenues of, of uh, education and um, uh, promotion of not just Ruth's name, but of, of, of all Maryland sports, you know, as time goes on, unfortunately, in the modern world, uh, if it's not front and center, younger people forget about it, you know, if I went up and asked a kid, 
who says he's a huge basketball fan and loves LeBron James, if I asked him who Magic Johnson was, probably wouldn't know. Um, and that's a shame because um, some of these historical names um, go by the wayside, the younger generations. Uh, not so much as in baseball um, because baseball's history is much more uh, even keel and you hear names like Mantle and Aaron and stuff no matter how many years they've, it's been since they retired or died or whatever. Um, uh, that's uh, a lot of the museum's future is going to be um, online, virtual. Um, and if Saber 50 happens next summer, uh, as it's scheduled in June, um, that will be a big boon for not just the museum, but all of, of Baltimore. If, you know, a thousand people come in from out of town, yeah. get a hotel, visit these things, uh, uh, buy some stuff. Um, we're doing our best. Uh, me being a uh, local chapter, yeah. Saber 50 planning committee, um, and all the people uh, involved, the Orioles, um, to make Saber 50 really memorable. You know, if we, you look on Saber's website, and they, you can see in, in years past, which Avengers may have had a Hall of Famer or two. Um, it's rare that they get one. Uh, I know Bob Feller's done them and a couple other guys um, over the years. Um, there's a good chance in Baltimore we might have several. Um, between, between the cooperation of the Orioles and and uh, knowing the people through the Babe Ruth Museum and the Foundation and all this kind of stuff, um, that, uh, we could have a very, very, very uh, interesting uh, panels and stuff next summer. Um, so uh, hopefully that's the long answer to a really easy question, but uh, that's where I am. Thank you. Votes, change votes, or was in any way compromised. Anybody else? Hi, Verona. Mm -hmm. and dominated by yeah. mm -hmm. I haven't heard, I haven't uh, heard from Bruce. Um, just to let you guys know, Saber, the uh, Saber um, day in January will be virtual. I mean, it's just going to have to be at this point. Um, Saber nice. HQ is going to have a, um, special program out of Arizona for like an hour or two. And then we're going to try to do ours somewhere that weekend as well. Hopefully not uh, interfere with um, uh, what other chapters have. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of chapters share this Zoom account because it's, uh, it's the headquarters account. Um, but we're, uh, we're going to do ours virtually. We don't know um, who's going to, you know, all that kind of stuff yet. Um, if anyone is interested, our chapter secretary is going to retire after her term expires in January. If you know anybody who wants to become an officer, uh, especially if Baltimore is your primary, um, you might have a seat available. Um, I'm trying to think what else. The website hopefully will be done by Christmas. I keep telling you that, but one day it will actually be done. Um, next month we have. Three uh, Zoom calls. We have um, John Gibson, the great grandson of Josh Gibson, is going to do a presentation on uh, December 2nd, I believe. And then we have another meeting December 9th, a gentleman from New York City, and I'm blanking on his name. Um, who's going to talk about his book? And then our holiday sort of chat gathering thing, we'll do with. Uh, Hot dot lunch on the third Wednesday in uh, December. With the, with the rising numbers, I don't know about where some of you guys are, but uh, I fear there's going to be a lockdown in Maryland <laughs> in the near future. Um, I was supposed to go to New York this weekend to go see my brother upstate, but uh, had to be canceled for COVID uh, restrictions. So um, we might be doing a lot more of these little window calls in, in the you know, into the new year until this vaccine uh, arrives and frees us all from our bondage. Anybody else? Questions, comments? I know this probably wasn't the most wowing of, of presentations. I uh, just wanted to do something a little different. Everybody's always talking about something academic, something they researched. Here's the 1930 season. You know, um, 
Yes, you know, most of you, you know me. I've been involved uh, with the Baltimore chapter now since it's um, inception already over five years ago. It's hard to believe. Um, you know, and we're doing pretty good uh, number wise. We have close to 300 people, I think, on our roster. Not all those are Baltimore primaries, but um, uh, we're doing pretty good. Um, and uh, we always get compliments from Sabre headquarters for uh, being very active. Um, and we have a good relationship, obviously, with the museum and the Orioles and, and stuff like that, which will hopefully grow as, as, as time goes on. Um, so, uh, um, you know, and I bet you, Bob, I guess the Bob Davids chapter, which a lot of you guys run here, uh, belong to, I guess, I'm assuming they're going to do a virtual one. Yes, uh, they are. I'm the vice president. Um, there you go. So... So we've been discussing and, and starting to contact people and so yeah. on. So we are having a, a virtual. Um, if you guys didn't know, um, Anna Marie Smith, everybody knows that name. And if you don't, you should probably leave Saber. Um, joined uh, Saber recently. I'm sure she was a member years ago, but she joined recently and is on the, uh, the Baltimore roster. Um, and obviously, as a, a, a Dodgers vice president now of the world champions, um, um, you know, uh, we'll probably be hearing her, if not at Sabre 50, then definitely at some chapter events down the line, too. And, um, Peter? Yes, Tom? Um, I thought your talk today was interesting and different, and I think it would be, maybe we could turn it into something. There's so many members of the Sabre groups and chapters and we know each other by name and in general but not specifics maybe sometime ever anthology where everybody that's been a saber member our chapter or the others could just get a short biography of how you did of how they got interested in baseball what they've done which would give everybody else in the in the chapters an idea of how extensive connections to baseball everybody has. It's a good idea. Well, you know, Sabre member, for those of you who came to our game already a year and a half ago, in 2019, um, that we did our, our summer game at Camden Yards, and I can't remember the exact date, we had a, a presenter who's, uh, from San Francisco. His name was, crap, I might blanking on his name. He wrote uh, Basis to Bleachers. Um, if you remember that book, and I'm Facebook friends, and I'm blanking on his name right now. Ray is his last name. Um, and he basically took people's stories, um, a baseball story, whether it was about their first game or when they met their hero or something like that, and assembled them into, into a book. Um, so if we could do something like that, but everybody would be their, their personal story. I got into, my dad took me and I saw Mickey Mantle when I was 10 or you know whatever the, the, the it is. You know, it doesn't even have to be more than a paragraph. But that would be uh, be awesome, and that way you might find out that uh, somebody in your chapter, um, like Verona, lives in in D.C., but she might find a huge Cardinals fan that she didn't know is in her chapter and might live, you know, two miles from her. So, um, stuff like that. That's a good idea, Tom. I'm going to have to bring that up with the powers that be somewhere down the line. Okay. Thank you. Also. I belong to the Jack Granny Cleveland chapter, and tonight at 7.30, they have a Zoom uh, meeting to 9 o'clock in conjunction with the Indians about the 1920 Cleveland Indians World Series title, first title team. And they have um, a couple of interesting panelists. One is the fellow that's on the Black Sox committee, because that had a, a lot to do with how the Indians won in 1920. And you can, uh, I think in the uh, uh, Sabre website, it'll have a connection to if you guys want to log on tonight. Or if anybody wants to attend, just email me and I can forward you the Zoom uh, uh, connection uh, link. If you guys didn't know, for those of you who are actual Sabre members, um, you go onto the Sabre site and you go into your account, you can sign, you can become a, um, you can join every chapter. Um, I think I'm probably a dozen to 15 different uh, 
chapter so I can get their emails and stuff. Um, like I'm in, in Manhattans and Cooperstowns and Denver's and Pittsburgh's and Philly and, and a bunch of other ones, Bob David's. Um, you pick your primary, obviously, wherever your loyalty lies. But uh, you can be on as many as you want, Tim, with the committees. Um, and that way you can uh, get updates from them. Um, since we, you guys know Paul Parker, the president of the, um, the Denver chapter, um, used to work for the Rockies. I've met him many times over the years. I'm, I'm, I get stuff from them. Um, they're a very active chapter. Um, obviously, I think Sabre now has 70 or maybe 80 chapters in the States, plus the ones overseas. So, I mean, if you want to join them all, be, you know, be my guest. Others, some are more active than others. But um, that, that, that is an option. You can turn off your, uh, you can unjoin a, a group anytime too. So, um, so that's, that's always an option if you'd like to find out what other people are, are doing. I would assume Vernona is probably on the St. Louis roster, but you never know. Um, <laughs> yes. So I'm, I'm on the, uh, there's no Scranton chapter, but there's a, uh, the Pennsylvania one. Um, I'm Philly, I'm Pittsburgh, and I'm also on the uh, one that's based in Harrisburg. So I like to find out what's going on in my home state, and you know, all that kind of stuff. So, Peter, I have and a I non baseball question. Since you grew up in a Scranton area, how close did you grow up to the, uh, neighborhood that Joe Biden grew up in. Joe, but I grew up not in the city of Scranton, but I did go to high school in downtown Scranton because I went to a, a, a Jesuit prep school. So um, his childhood home is not that far from where my high school is, but I think he left. He was like five or six. Um, the question up there is now is when he has a presidential library, is it going to go in his hometown or is it going to go to Delaware where obviously he's more known and spent most of his life? Um, a lot of times they go to the hometown, obviously it's up to the president themselves, what they prefer. Ronald Reagan is from Illinois, but his library is in Simi Valley, California. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, which is interesting, if you look at the map, Stanton is in Lackawanna County. Lackawanna County went for Biden, but all, most of the surrounding counties, and obviously some of those are fairly rural, there are a lot of pro-life, very Catholic hunters up that way. Um, <laughs> Oh, a lot of those counties were red. It's just the ones that had more population. Yeah, Peter, I like the uh, the the baseball themed idea of the, the wedding. I thought that was very the very clever. Can you talk a little more about that? As far as, I mean, you mentioned about the rings, but in terms of like the invitations and the uh, and the and the place settings for the uh, you know for the guests. How we did it, obviously, when I proposed, I did it at the Hall of Fame. Um, and it was only, I proposed a couple, you know, for those of you who are married or have been or, or, or whatnot, you talk about it before you get married. Um, but she probably knew it was coming. And her birthday was um, two days before we went. It was Saturday night, actually. We, and I didn't propose on her birthday. We went to the restaurant we went to for our first date here in Baltimore on Eastern Avenue um, didn't propose. We left the next day and went up to the Hall of Fame, or went up to uh, to New York. And Monday mornings uh, when I proposed, um, the Hall of Fame was in on it because as a member, I e I forget if I called or emailed in advance and said, coming up, it's opening day week. Um, we're going to be there. Wonder if you have any events that aren't listed, if any big Hall of Fame names or something's going to be going on that might not be public information. And they said no. And I said, well, that stinks. I'm planning on proposing. Um, so I got an email from their head communications guy who said, that's great. We'd love to be a part of it. What do you plan on doing? So I gave him kind of the specifics, the time, and, and whatnot. So when I did it, um, right before I did it, somebody, worked to the Hall of Fame, who's their photographer, walked past me and she didn't notice. And I could tell he was staff. He had this shirt on and everything. He had his big camera and he nodded at me and I nodded to him. And uh, so when I did it, he was able to catch, capture several photos, and which one of which I showed you. Um, caught her off guard. And then we were on the Cooperstown, whatever blog that they had at the time that evening and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, my dad passed several months later. Um, in uh, September of, of 
2012. And then when we started planning our wedding, Renee's mom was very sick. Um, but as we got closer, we knew what we were going to do. We knew a traditional church wedding because that's who we are and that's the way we were raised. Um, since we had some of our engagement shoot at Camden Yards, we should do some uh, baseball theme, even though our wedding was in December and outside the season. Um, I bought that guest book without our permission um, from the uh, Cooperstown Bat Company and had our names engraved on it and said, you know, surrounded by family and friends that had our names uh, and the wedding date and everything. Um, so people signed that with Sharpies. We still have that. We don't have that in a, in a, a nice case yet. It's still in the basement. Um, but all the other stuff was stuff we came up with together, like the, um, the favors. The, you know, I don't, I've never been through this wedding stuff before aside from going as a guest. So I didn't know how much go, goes into it. <laughs> Uh, my wife's now a wedding planner, so she does this regularly. But, um, you know, we did the favors were all um, baseball type candies. There was peanuts and, and you know, and other, that kind of stuff. Snacks that you put your own bag and left. We had, uh, um, we had a very small reception, 70, 75 people. Um, so instead of doing table numbers, we decided to do teams. And uh, so we first we went, okay, which teams don't we like? So we're not using those logos. Um, and then, so she, she's a Phillies person, so Mets are out. I can't stay in Boston, so they're out, you know, that kind of thing. We whittled down, we picked four AL and four NL teams. And we, as we put the tables together, okay, you're going to be, uh, you know, you got your little escort card when you came into the reception and it had your name on Mr. and Mrs. whatever. And it would have the logo on it. Just found the table that had that logo. So you were at the Yankees table, or you were at the Cubs table, or, or that kind of thing. Um, and then the, the cake toppers she found, um, and we picked that design. Actually, that even though it was a three-layered cake, three different flavors. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was uh, it was interesting, and it was very me. Um, and obviously, she allowed it, so it's it's her too. Uh, it was different. It was memorable, and. Uh, you know, it was definitely a, a, a tribute to to my dad uh, as well, because he would, I mean, he would have loved, <laughs> he would have loved that. Um, and the funny thing is we had all the guests, if you've been to weddings, you go around, you see the, the bride and, and the groom. Um, always, every, first thing you hear all day is congratulations, you look great, you're so gorgeous, you know, the bride, all that kind of stuff. Oh, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Renee's cousin-in-law, um, who married her, her first cousins, walked up to me, the first thing he said to me was like, why am I at the Braves table? <laughs> He's a Yankees fan. I was like, no congratulations, no nothing. He's like, yeah, how come I got stuck at the Braves? I was like, well, not everybody got the table of their favorite team. It's, um, I can tell you the eight teams we did, and I probably would have picked different ones. I tried to do one from at least from each division. Um, so obviously AL, we had Orioles, we had Yankees, because so many Yankees fans were going to be there, and plus the, the Ruth connection in Baltimore and everything. And from the central, we did the twins because I have a friend from Minnesota, even though I didn't sit him at that table. And then from the west, we did Oakland um, because my brother and I used to like Oakland. And plus, they have that the Philadelphia connection, which is where Renee is from. And then for the NL, we did Phillies, Braves, Cubs, and Dodgers. So I probably would have switched some of those up around now. Should have did Pirates for the Pennsylvania thing, whatever. But um, it was it was fun. Um, yeah, very, very memorable. Actually, our, our uh, anniversary will be next month, be seven years. Great story, Peter. Great story. Thanks. Mm. So, anybody uh, going anywhere for Thanksgiving or? No? Nope, staying put. No. Well, Baltimore City, I think I'm the only one here who lives in the city, um, has more restrictions than even the, the state does. Um, what's what can be open, what the capacity is, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Renee and I are actually going out somewhere as of now, unless that changes in the next week. Um, you know, and uh, and then who knows what it's going to be like in a month? Is a lot of the stuff up here has been uh, canceled. Anybody who's seen that they used to have that German Christmas village on the Inner Harbor that's been scrapped for this year. Um, the Philly is doing theirs. Who is? Philadelphia. I There's saw that, but you saw that Philly just uh, announced that all the restaurants, all indoor dining and stuff is closed. So I wonder if they're going to rethink yeah. that village thing. 
who knows i got another week um yeah we were considering going up but i'm like uh, not with my immune system so, um i know some of you guys are a little older than me i mean everybody has to has to watch it numbers are skyrocketing um it's not uh if I get this, I'll, I'll, you know, I probably won't make it. So that's why I'm, I'm extra careful. United States reported 1,707. But uh, well, thank you all for uh, for coming. If nobody has any other questions, um, I'm glad the Dodgers won. I wish I was at that new ballpark in Texas. I do not like fake surfaces. That's another thing. Um, I don't know if you noticed a couple teams who had natural grass have gone back. Uh, Florida being one, the Diamondbacks, and now, and the, um, we know Tampa. Um, and, uh, Texas now, they used to have grass at the ballpark in Arlington, but now with their new giant barbecue looking place um, as a fake service. So, and I read somewhere that some uh, some minor league teams are considering going it too for, for money reasons. Um, not happy. My brother's a forest ranger. He hates anything fake. So, President Trump is actually here to I agree. Yeah. Um, all I can say is that here in Baltimore, they've never had a fake service. I think DC is the same way. Um, but uh, some of the other places have had them. Um, even St. Louis. <laughs> That's right. So, over, over the years. So, um, all right, we've got about 120. So if you guys don't have anything else. I will send out the uh, the the notice uh, probably a week in advance for the the next call. I have to set it up with Mr. Gibson since it's going to probably be, if I'm not mistaken, um, an evite thing that you would have to sign up for. Um, shouldn't cost anything, but because it's technically going to be hosted by the um, Gibson Foundation, they uh, go on with whatever their uh, protocols are. And uh, I think Ted was the one who, who got this all set up for us. I know Josh is doing a couple calls with other chapters, We're like third or fourth in line. I'm very lucky to be uh, have Mr. Gibson uh, want to talk to us about his great grandfather and about possibly switching the uh, the name on the MVP trophies to uh, Josh Gibson. So which would be which would be really nice. Uh, Josh Gibson doesn't get it. I think uh, Frank Robinson. Um, well, first of all, and I thought that these were I guess that's about it. Um, everybody's good. Otherwise, thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Be in touch. See you next time around. Have a good uh, holiday. You too. Happy Thanksgiving. All right. Bye. Take care. Thanks. Stay safe. Bye. Stay healthy. Yeah. That is really incredible.